Hi, I'm Edscar, and today is the first part of a two-part video series on the Warlord Games M10 Wolverine Tank Destroyer. Today I'll build the model, and next week I'll paint it. I will mention that I luckily enough won this model at the local tournaments that I make vlogs about, so thanks to War Games Workshop and the Outriders MK. More American armor, I hear you cry, you've done this twice before. But I'm going to do a few things differently with this kit to make the videos a little more interesting. The kit comes on two sprues and has the ancillaries that you would expect from Warlord. In this case, one part had actually broken away from the sprues and was caught in the plastic bag, which is convenient and why the plastic bag exists. The first sprue has the hull and crew, the second turrets, tracks and a whole heap of small pieces. And we shall start with the tracks, or more specifically the road wheels. Many of the Italeri model tanks are made with the whole suspension and road wheels as one molded piece. And this makes the kit a whole lot easier and quicker to build, and it makes it more durable when you're playing on the tabletop. And that's a very good thing if you are a wargamer, that's sort of what you want but it does lack the detail of a display model kit, so display modelers aren't so happy with this sort of thing. The biggest visible issue with this is that the road wheels end up extended into the side of the hull, and that's so that it can be just a single piece mold. Previously, I have simply painted the tires black and the extra material that's filled in in the armor color, or I've just covered it all in mud. But this time I'm going to try a trick that a few people have used before. By very carefully cutting along the line of the hull and along the bottom half of the tire, the extra material can be removed. This is extremely fiddly and I had trouble getting angles where I wasn't cut, kind of pointing a knife towards myself, but eventually I did manage to get there and cut all of those away cleanly. Now, doesn't that make all the difference? With that out of the way, we can get on with the usual build for the Italeri tank tracks. The drive sprocket goes up front, has a D-shaped keying piece, but there's still a little wiggle, so make sure that the teeth line up with each other. The idler wheels goes on the back. Again, there's a little bit of keying, but smaller. And this is to ensure that this hole in the back of the tire is correctly aligned. And you can see these other holes on the road wheels are all there too and they will give the keying for the tracks, which is pretty nice. With the bottom piece glued onto those keying holes, the front and back curved sections of track can then go into place. And I did have a little trouble keeping these straight, they both wanted to kind of wander off all wonky. And so I got the top piece on as well, which has the familiar missing teeth to account for the return rollers having that same type of stretched to fill the mold that the road wheels have. No point in trimming these down because these are just not going to be visible at all. Now once that was all dry you can glue the completed tracks to the hull or keep them separate for painting. In this case I chose that I will actually stick them on as I'll be keeping the hull top separate and so I still get access to all of the tracks. I realised that this rear piece actually does need to go on before the tracks and so I pulled one side off and got this back piece on. I was noticing that the track panels weren't totally up against the hull, particularly at the front. Now I doubt this is going to be an issue, but I did try to hold them in place while the glue dried. As we will see later, the open top turret and not having a turret basket means that the inside of the hull will be visible in the final model. And so we have these hatches, probably ammo storage bins, to glue in as a panel. There are some very tiny protrusions that it sits on, but strangely, it sits very nicely in place, without much movement even before glue is added. And I wanted to make sure that the upper hull would fit over the top, and it did. At the back of the hull, there is what I think is an elaborate exhaust apparatus. There are two curved pipe pieces that you have to glue on, and then there's also a clamp or hook thing that goes in the middle. Now I thought this last piece was a towing hook, but it actually seems to hold onto the exhaust box. So I glued it in place all together because at the very least that's going to add to the strength of these parts. 
I vaguely assume I have this in correctly, the instructions are not entirely clear. The front of the hull does have two hatches that can be positioned open with crew figures inside perhaps, or buttoned down as I will have them. The headlights and headlight guards are one piece, with a nice square keying tab to line them up very easily. There's also supposed to be an antenna here, but it would get in the way of the turret's movement too much for me. Also, I dropped it on the floor and I couldn't find it. Two rack pieces also go onto the upper hull, and there are nice keying recesses for them to sit into. There's also a back armour panel for the upper hull as well, and this has the spade that is naturally required. I still don't have a US model that does not have a spade. This small tab looking thing is the travel lock for the main gun so that it doesn't bounce around when travelling long distances. Two loops, probably for lifting the vehicle onto a ship or while it's being manufactured, go onto the back here with nice keying for both. It's actually strange that the equivalent loops on the front of the hull are moulded into the upper hull piece and therefore are just solid with no hole, and I'm not, ex I'm not exactly sure why these two pieces are done differently. Finally, the rear lights, again, nicely keyed, fit into place. Moving on to the turret, I noticed that some of the pieces on this sprue have very large cross-sectional joins from the sprue gate to the part. Now this isn't necessarily a huge deal, but it does mean you have to be more careful cleaning these up. Possibly sanding them down, although I managed to do it just with a very careful knife cut. The first storage boxes, actually the first four, also had these huge gates, and so they took a lot of time to carefully shave off the extra sprue material, and then I glued them onto the inside of the turret top. It was slightly awkward to reach in here, but I found that putting glue into the inside of the turret and then sliding the boxes into place worked for me. There is a slightly different box that goes up towards the front, and the back has a vented grill looking thing. But the most difficult part for me here was the gun sight. The instructions, again, weren't clear about exactly how this goes in, and I struggled to find images of either the model kit built or the real tank's gun sight that would tell me exactly how this should go in, and so I winged it, glued it in the best I could so that it's at very least popping over the top of the turret. The lower part of the turret gets some ready ammunition on little racks, and these are nicely visible from outside the turret when complete. This almost pointless little tab gets glued on, I have no idea why this wasn't moulded into the turret, and then the turret traverse wheel also goes just in front of that. Let's deal with the main gun next, and this is a strange piece that took a minute to figure out. The two halves of the breech assembly glue together, and the D-shaped keying that it forms on the front accepts the barrel with the crossbar that acts as the axis of elevation. It all looks very strange, and it's difficult to keep this aligned, so I recommend laying this down until the glue sets, possibly prop it up on some foam or some pens or something to ensure it stays aligned. The loading ramp can then go on once that is set, and it goes on... It's hard to describe, but the opening points upwards, so kind of just like this. I found that you can actually attach the mantlet to the gun at this stage before gluing the turret together, and this will help me out with painting. Remember the orientation of the loading ramp, and the bumps on the mantlet point upwards. Going back to the turret, there are these counterweights for the back, which give the M10 its distinct appearance, although I'll admit I prefer the other design. For no reason that I can identify, the ammo box for the 50 cal is in two pieces. Once those two are stuck together, it can be stuck to the gun, the ammo feed having a nice keying. This will go into the pintle mount here, but I'll leave it unglued for painting. And with the turret now complete, I'll show you the little trick of assembling it with the gun mantlet fitted, so that you can paint it all in sub-assemblies if you choose to do. Start off by putting the main gun into the upper turret by slightly pointing it downwards, and once it's in, point it all of the way up, and you can slide the lower piece of the turret into place. 
and then that has the usual turret locking tabs to put it onto the hull. I did notice that this piece, seemingly a different travel lock, was nowhere in the instructions. And the instructions mention two tow hooks, I think, for the front of the hull that aren't on the sprue. The Italeri consistently inconsistent instructions strike again. Lastly, we have the crew, with Americans for the Wolverine and Brits for the Achilles. For some reason, I decided not to have the crew for this vehicle, but it means I can use two of them for my 3D printed M8 Greyhound. But there is the Warlord Games and Italeri kit of the M10 Wolverine Tank Destroyer for bolt action. This is the first part complete, building the model, and next week I will have a companion video where I paint it, and I will be trying a technique that I've not used before. But for now, I'm Edscar, always will be, and thank you very much for watching.